Today I'm reviewing yet another budget-friendly robot vacuum. In this case we have the iLife V5 Pro. We put it through all of our usual tests and there were actually some genuine surprises. I would say that the V5 Pro is really good at what it does, but it also has some issues that you should be aware of if you're planning on buying it. So stick around for the cons section at the very end. Links in the description to everything I'll mention and let's get started. So the iLife V5 Pro is similar to the iLife V3 Pro, which we've also reviewed, mainly in that they both have a suction only port instead of a traditional spinning brush, which we'll talk more about later. The V5 Pro also has the option to attach a mop where the V3 doesn't. And as we'll see, the V5 is much more powerful than the V3 as well. So let's jump into the pros. As I said, it's really powerful. We measured its airflow with an anemometer and found that it had 23 CFM on high power and 16 CFM on low power. For context, that's almost a Vacuum Wars record. It has more airflow than the $1,300 Roomba S9 Plus, and almost as much as the current airflow champion, the DBOT 950. Now, to be fair, its airflow is less restricted than those others because, as I mentioned, it just has a suction-only port, so there's no brush getting in the way of the air path. However, we also tested its suction, and while this is a new test and I don't have a lot of data on other robots, it seems much higher than average, and it seems to line up with the V5 Pro promotional material regarding suction. Its power really showed up on the crevice pickup test where it did better than any robot I've ever seen on this particular test. Again, you can chalk this up to the suction only port, which has a very tight seal on hard floors, so it would be really good for wood floors with large cracks in them or tile floors. Its debris pickup on hard floors was above average as well. The extra power made it as good or better than a typical robot vacuum, even in its low power setting. It also did good with heavy debris like sand, the two side brushes didn't scatter debris too badly, and like all the other iLife robots I've tested, the brushes are longer than usual, meaning that they clean deeper into the corners than other round robot vacuums do. And unlike the iLife A4S, which we just tested, the brushes on the V5 Pro don't seem prone to being bunched up on carpets, but we'll talk more about carpets later. The other pro was that it was really good with pet and human hair. This is because it has a suction port and not the brush, so it doesn't get hair tangles. We tested it with one gram of five inch hair, a test that most robots in this price range do very badly at, and the V5 Pro got all the hair into the bin, which is why the suction only port exists. Its battery life was also much better than average. iLife says it can get between 110 and 120 minutes per charge, and while that's about what many of its competitors claim, it should be noted that the iLife V5 Pro is getting those same numbers with a much higher power output, even in its low power at 16 CFM, which is pretty powerful. As I said, the V5 Pro is also a mop. You basically attach a mopping pad to the bottom and replace the regular dry dust bin with a water bin, which will slowly soak the mopping pad. And while there are aspects of the mopping that will show up in the con section later on, the pro of the iLife V5 Pro mopping is that it did much better than I was expecting in terms of actual mopping ability. Basically, I dry coffee, grape juice and V8 juice overnight, and I found that these particular stains can be a struggle for most robot vacuum mop combos. But the V5 Pro did exceptionally well on this test, better than just about any other robot vacuum mop combo. With navigation and coverage, the iLife V5 Pro is pretty good. Keep in mind that like almost all robot vacuums in this price range, it's a random navigation robot, meaning that it more or less randomly bounces around to clean your home. And in the big room test, it had almost full coverage at 30 minutes, which was slightly better than average. On the two small room 25 minute tests, it did miss the area around the base twice in a row, but I think this was just a fluke since it had no trouble around the base in the big room. All in all, I would say that its random navigation algorithm was pretty good for a robot in this price range. It was also quieter than average, but really not by much. The final pro was the price. iLife makes some very reasonably priced robot vacuums, and the V5 Pro is no exception. It's really inexpensive, even for a budget robot vacuum. But it can't all be good stuff, so let's move on to the cons. The downside to not having a standard brush roll is that it's not going to be very good with carpets. To be fair, it does okay with carpets. The shorter the carpet, the better, and it picked up a lot of the debris in our carpet debris test, but if I was scoring this for a regular robot vacuum, I would say that it was well below average with debris pickup on carpet. 
In addition, on the carpet deep clean test, where we embed 100 grams of sand onto medium pile carpet and weigh the dust bins, it got the second worst score in Vacuum Wars history at 33%, with the worst score being the iLife V3 Pro, which was also a suction only vacuum, but with less power. I would say that the iLife V5 Pro can do carpets and rugs, but it's designed for people with hard floors and pets, and for them, it's really good. Another con is that the dry dustbin is pretty small and it's kind of a pain to remove and empty. A few other cons are about the mop. The first is that you have to remove the dry bin and replace it with the water bin to mop. This is unusual as most robot vacuum mop combos allow you to dry vacuum and mop at the same time, but with the V5 Pro, it's one or the other. It's also not great with dealing with carpets and rugs while mopping, so you really need to prepare a room and physically block off the parts of the house that you don't want the robot to mop. Basically, if you want to use the mop, you need to do a lot of prep work. Despite those negatives, I was really impressed with the V5 Pro and I really wasn't expecting to be. It's designed for people with mostly hard floors and people who have a lot of pet hair to clean. That's where the V5 Pro shines. If you have a lot of carpets and rugs, I would not recommend the V5 Pro, but I would say to check out the the description where I will link our favorite robot vacuums in various price ranges. Be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars and thanks for watching.